Hello and welcome to my masterclass. I'm Flo from Baka Cosplay. I am a special makeup artist and I'm cosplaying since 2005 already, which led me to be a wig maker professionally. So I'm mixing special effects, very traditional special effects um, with cosplay techniques, which are very unusual. But uh, this is a perfect thing to do in cosplay because some of my clients are um, projects they are very different and sometimes I even fusion these two areas these two natures of making into one wig so I'm gonna show you four of my I think most important things that you need to do and to learn when you're doing cosplay wigs I know that my wig book will take time because I have many things I want to show to you and there are many things to know about so I'm gonna show you four of the most important things so the first one are these plastic copies of your head that you need as a cosplayer to make your wig fit. And this is also what I ask of my clients. So you need to make this kind of plastic thing. The second one are different kind of hairlines that you already see here uh, from very realistic to very durable or whatever you need. And uh, the third one is durable wig styling. So they survive conventions and the fourth one is something that is quite unestimated is how to fixate all these wigs to your head um, the first and the last one are good for my clients so if you don't touch a wig you still need two of these master classes so how to put on the wig and how to send me these copies but you can also use them of course uh, and when you are a cosplayer and you always want to have your wig fitting you need a nice copy of your head and you can also make helmets and face frames and heads and whatever with this technique i thought of posting a written guide for you to check at the same time as your work because what you see here is really the core of the wig making you need as a cosplayer and also when you are my client you need to make these head copies and also you want to put your wig on correctly so I'm gonna post that for you. And if you want to check out my Instagram, I was posting um, every month, I was doing a live stream where people post and commented very detailed questions about wig making. So what you see here is the more elaborate version, the complete version of it. And on Instagram, there were very detailed questions additionally. And I think it's always great fun to be there. I'm gonna post my contacts at the end of the video and around the video, so everywhere. Um, and we have a great community helping each other. So if you have more questions, they will be answered. So let's dive into it. A wig only looks good when it's fitting perfectly, when the wig is like part of your head. So it is a chance that a machine or a mass produced wig fits your head. And it can't because they are not very anatomically correct. So we need these. It's not only making your wigs more authentic looking, but also more comfortable. So you don't die on conventions uh, and you can enjoy your conventions. So I, I recommend doing your wig head copy. The tools and materials that you will need are the following. You need helping hands, obviously, because you can't do this alone in the back of your head. Different needles and hairpins, a blow dryer and some hair products to fixate flyaways and a wig net or a wig cap. A teasing brush, a tail comb, some skin liner. I used, for example, the one by Creolan. To remove the ink of the permanent marker, you can use alcohol or nail polish or acetone and apply those on a Q-tip to do the corrections precisely. Of course, then permanent markers, safety scissors, measuring tape and a plastic wrapper, a small and a big transparent tape, sharp scissors, different kinds of needle and a wig head that is approximately the same shape and size as your own head. First you want to do is to flatten out your hair as much as possible so it doesn't get in the way, but mainly also because the wig needs to be as close to your skin as possible. 
Here I'm using the product that is already in the hair. When you have longer hair, you can use a wig net instead of a wig cap. But even with longer hair, I prefer using wig caps because they press down the hair. Use for darker hair a lighter wig cap so you can perfectly see the hair through the lighter wig cap. I did not do that here because it looks horrible, but I recommend doing that when you do it that at home. The most important thing is to free your hairline as much as possible so it stays visible. Clip on the wig cap with wig clips. I think they are best also to hold your wig in place. I can explain that in another video. And when you have done that, you can remove the wig clips or in this case bobby pins. Rearrange the hair as much as possible to get it flat on your head and not have bumps everywhere. I'm using a tail comb for that because it's easiest. Fixate the flyaways and the strands of hair that fall out of the wig cap with hairspray or gel or whatever you prefer and blow dry it. Please, not too hot, be careful, it's still heat. It is crucial to have the hairline as free as possible, so the hair must be brushed not only to the back but diagonally up and back at the same time so the ears are free. This step takes a lot of time but you will need the time Now you can trace the hairline. I used a skin liner by Cruella because I rarely use this very bright color, but for this purpose it's perfect. This is the moment where you decide how much fluff you want to have in your hairline and how long you want the sideburns to be. I recommend having the sideburns a slightly longer because this baby hair on exactly this spot might flip outside of the wig cap all the time and you need the wig to hide those. I recommend taking pictures of the drawn hairline because you want to have some reference afterwards, especially behind the ears. This area might be hidden and you need this spot to glue bald caps or something else. What I do personally is to use some tension to stretch the middle of the wrap foil to get a rounded shape. But then you let go of the tension because you don't want to falsify the head copy because nobody can wear a wig so tightly as you would do the head copy. The foil might get over the eyes, but please do not cover your mouth and your nose. Now we're really beginning with the tape copy. So you fixate the wrap foil by adding transparent tape that you press on firmly. And we're using transparent tape obviously so we can see the line underneath. Begin by the temples, because this is the flattest side of the skull. You can cut pieces, but please be careful with the scissors. The priority is to keep your model safe. Concentrate on the edges first, then you can secure the midlines and the space between the ears over the head. And then fill up the spaces in between. Just be careful that you avoid unnecessary creases. You also decide in this step if you want to have the perfect and accurate hairline, which is a little bit risky in case the hair slips out of the, underneath the wig, or if you want to round it up and be more secure and have a little bit more wiggly room around the hairline. When tracing the line behind the ears, you can consult the photos and decide what line you will apply. If you forgot to take some pictures, you can trace the second line inside of the ear, which is the antihelix. And this is approximately-ish where the ear sits on the skull. Beyond this line begins the hairline, but in between there is no hair, so this is the area where you glue on bald caps, etc. Now you mark the central line. It is very useful to mark the actual position of the ears where glasses would rest because this is exactly where there is the beginning of the sideburns and you know exactly the position of the wig itself. Sometimes it is not 100% necessary to be very very detailed so depending your project and your time and your expectations. But I recommend doing one good head copy for the rest of your cosplay life. When tracing the nape, be careful that you stay on the head itself and not going too low into the nape. If you have to, because there's still some baby hair there, I would recommend shaving that off. 
If your wig will have a very unique hairline, you can trace it with your model now. I recommend using different colors and of course labeling them. For example, what I did for my Shikamaru wig is his hairline is very far back and I wanted to be as close to the original as possible. So I have very short and uh, light hair, so it was easy for me to go back and maybe cheat a little bit with makeup or worst case, I can just shave off the baby hairs. Correct mistakes with alcohol, nail polish remover, acetone, etc. and just wipe it off and draw again. You will have a cleaner outcome and a better overview in case you plan making many of them. Add the date or name or project just in case. Draw the guidelines for the reconnections in the nape later on. I recommend strongly to secure the lines of the permanent marker with a layer of thin tape because you never know which hair product has solvents or alcohol etc and they might reactivate your ink and stain your wig. This is the perfect opportunity to take reference pictures of your head 360 to do a 3D scan or to measure your head. You can even do a second head copy on top of this one to have a pattern for very skin tight helmets and hoods, etc. To be safe, use safety scissors. Lay your fingers between the model and the scissors and the plastic. Keep the shears on a safe distance. Cut open the plastic in the nape as much as you need only, carefully. Please keep all the detailed cutting for afterwards, safety away from the model. Let the model put on the head copy several times and then you can see if there are any mistakes left. So now that you have a functioning head copy, you can search for a fitting wig head. The most important thing is that the main hairline are fitting. Stuff a little bit of cotton underneath to fill up the gap in between. And what I like to do is do another layer on top because this layer you can replace it in case it gets dirty. Of course you can use this head copy for other hair pieces and head frames, face frames, helmets, bonnet, everything you can imagine like hoods and stuff. And also you can use this if you want to construct prosthetics and you want to, like what I did for Sombra, you have these shapes and then you can cut it and put it on your head perfectly. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot. If you have further questions than that, just comment them or you can of course contact me. I did my best to explain everything physically and uh, visually, which is so much more um, effective than just trying to type it in in a chat. So I hope it is successful. And if you are one of my clients, good luck making it and sending the copy to me so I can make your wig. And if you are just a cosplayer being curious how to improve your wig skills, Good luck with the project and I want to see it. So um, good luck and see you the next time.